today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. While everyone's talking about Donald Trump, Cassie's lawyer is coming for Diddy's neck. 50 Cent is getting major backlash for his reaction to the Donald Trump win. Diddy's son needs to stay offline. It's getting ridiculous now. People are saying that Donald Trump might give Diddy a part of what up? It's Chen Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. All right, it's Thursday morning, my second favorite day of the week. Why? Because Friday is one day away. All right, you guys, I got a great show set up for you guys. Of course, everybody is talking about the presidential election, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump. We have some updates and things that they're not talking about on mainstream media. We have some Diddy news for you. Cassie's lawyer is coming for Diddy. Everybody wants to know the Diddy vote. We have all that for you. Of course, we also have question of the day, and we're going to close out the show as we always do with a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radio, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Donald Trump becomes the oldest elected president of the United States, first convicted criminal, and the first twice impeached to hold office. All right, mainstream media is still talking about Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, the election. What we've tried to do, um, what we are going to try to do at the Trying to Loud podcast is trying to gather up bits and pieces of things that they're not talking about um, on, on mainstream media. And this headline is one of the first things that a lot of people are not talking about. Love Donald Trump or hate him, he is breaking a lot of the molds out there. He is the oldest president, which Donald Trump, when he was running, says that Biden is too old. He's cognitive, he has cognitive decline. Now Donald Trump becomes the oldest. He's also the first convicted criminal. Again, like him or not, he was convicted by a jury of his peers, not by anybody else. And then also he was also twice impeached, which is not really that important because that is political. The impeachment happens politically. But um, a lot of people are not talking about that. But of course, you know me, I always try to get things that are not talking about on mainstream media and bring it to you guys here. What do you guys think about that? He is a convicted criminal. Does that change your mind? Obviously, it doesn't really change a lot of his supporters. And not only did he win um, the electoral vote, he won the popular vote. And I feel like this is getting suppressed. So let me know, send me emails, comment below. Does this, did you guys forget about this or does this not matter? Because like what everybody's saying, it's really about uh, the economy. All right, um, I'll read a quick article. In a shocking turn of events, Donald Trump has secured the presidency, breaking records as the oldest person, the first convicted criminal and twice impeached individual to assume the nation's highest office. Trump victory marks a significant shift in American politics sparking concern about the implications of his conviction and impeachment history on his presidency. Trump's campaign successfully navigated controversy surrounding his business fraud conviction in May, with the former president found guilty on 34 felony counts. Despite this, Trump remains eligible to hold office as the Constitution does not explicitly bar individuals with felony convictions to serve as president. I talked about this yesterday on episode 369. You could be in jail, in jail. Forget about convictions. You could be in jail and still run for president and still be the president, the sitting president of the United States. This unprecedented outcome raised questions about Trump's ability to serve effectively, given his pending sentence on November the 26th and potential appeals process. Moreover, Trump's impeachment history, having been impeached twice by the House of Representatives, adding to the complexity surrounding his presidency. Again, like I said, a lot of people um, are not really talking about this. Um, I saw one thing somewhere that um, I think one of the cases they're going to be dropped. I think it, the guy's name is um, Jim Smith. I think the guy who's um, um, bringing the case around him for the January 6th. So we'll see what happens with that. I think most of the cases will just get dropped. Nobody wants to see the president of the United States on trial or in jail. Uh, Fanny, uh, Fanny, um, Willis has been reelected. She is the DA in Georgia and, um, we'll see what happens with her. Her, her case against Trump is, um, a state case. So we'll see what happens. I think it's probably just going to get all dropped. But like I said, I wanted to jump on here. I know I have 
Kamala Harris supporters, Donald Trump supporters. This is a purple podcast um, battleground. Let me know. Sound off below. Did people forget about this? Did people just um, not care? And was it really just about the economy? Um, all right. So we have a couple other things. Um, again, I don't feel like, of course, American media is not going to cover, and most America, uh, most media is not going to cover the effects or what people are saying from around the world. Um, as me being Canadian, I wanted to give you guys um, context of what our prime minister and one of our the leaders of the NDP party is saying, all right? So Justin Trudeau, our president, we don't call him presidents here in Canada, we call him prime minister. So uh, Justin Trudeau congratulates Donald Trump on his victory. He tweeted out and said, congratulations to Donald Trump on being elected president of the United States. The friendship between Canada and the US is the envy of the world. I know President Trump and I will work together to create more opportunities, prosperity, and security for both of our nations. So that seems positive. Um, he has worked with uh, Donald Trump in the past. He was um, prime minister when Donald Trump was in office. Uh, Justin Trudeau is very liberal. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, he, he a lot of the times gets dragged on Joe Rogan, um, um, Elon Musk. So for those of you who don't know, he's very, very liberal, like Bernie Sanders or even uh, further uh, than Bernie. So... We'll see what happens. Trump is on a, 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 a path right now to be very American. I do have a story about what this means for the Canadian economy, uh, but let's go for, uh, next to uh, Jadmeet Singh and what he said about Trump winning. Judge me, uh, Jadmeet Singh uh, speaks out about, the, about President Trump winning. Here is a video. Take a listen. I know that the results of Trump's election is going to have serious impacts on Canadians. So we need to come together, all parties, all leaders. All right. So like I said, he is the uh, he works with Trudeau. He's a member of parliament and he is the leader of the NDP, the new Democratic Party here in Canada. Um, again, also uh, very liberal. And, um, and like he said, Canadians are worried. Seventy seven percent of our export goes to the U.S. if Trump puts a tariff on Canadian export, that will not be good for the Canadian economy, which leads me to my um, economic review, uh, the Canadian economic review, all right? Um, Donald Trump's victory sparks concerns over rippling effects on the Canadian economy. Some Canadian business leaders have expressed worry over Donald Trump's promise to introduce a universal 10% tariff on all American imports. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce reports suggest that tariffs would shrink the Canadian economy, resulting in around $30 billion per year in economic costs. American economists have warned Donald Trump's plan could cause inflation and a possible recession, which could have rippling effects in Canada. Uh, more than 77% of Canadian exports go to the U.S., the Toronto Region Board of Trade says that since the Canada-U.S.-Mexico agreement came into effect in 2020, trades between Canada and the U.S. have surged by 46%. That deal is up for renew in 2026. So that will be one year into Donald Trump's presidency. So that is reaction from Canadian government leaders, and that is the reaction on the uh, Canadian economy. Just wanted to share that. I know most of my viewers are American. All right, so uh, let's go over now and just go over some celebrity reaction. We know there was a lot more celebrities endorsing uh, Kamala Harris, and I uh, just wanted to just go over some of the, their reactions uh, right now. Uh, LeBron James said, Heavy on my heart and mind this AM, my princess. Promise to protect you with everything I have and more. We don't need their help. And he has a picture of him holding his daughter. One of the reasons why this is, is that when Donald, sorry, when LeBron James put out his support for Kamala Harris, he said, because I have a daughter, I'm thinking about her reproductive rights, et cetera, et cetera. And for women out there, um, and this is why I'm supporting um, Kamala Harris. So Kamala Harris. Um, so that is um, uh, LeBron James's reaction. Uh, 50 Cent is getting a lot of backlash for uh, his reaction. But um, Mark Zuckerberg said, congratulations to, I'll, I'm going to get to 50 Cent. I just want to save him for last. Um, Mark Zuckerberg said, congratulations to the president, Donald Trump, on a decisive victory. 
We have a great opportunity ahead of us for this country. Looking forward to working with you and your administration. Jeff Bezos, who had a lot of controversy because he owns the Washington Post and he didn't let the Washington Post endorse Kamala Harris. So um, Kamala Harris, I can't, I never, because I hear so much different pronunciation, I get so confused. Her name is Kamala Harris. Jeez. Um, anyways, Jeff Bezos put this out. He said, big congratulations to our 45th and now 47th president on an extraordinary political comeback and decisive victory. No nation has a bigger opportunity. Um, wishing the real Donald Trump, because that's his Twitter, wishing Donald Trump all the success in leading and uniting America we all love. And lastly, before 50 Cent, uh, Mark Cuban said, congratulations to Donald Trump. You won a you won fair and square. And he also said, congratulations to Elon Musk as well. We all know Elon Musk was the billionaire who was backing Trump. And um, Mark Cuban was backing Kamala Harris. So that's why he said congrats to uh, Elon Musk. I sh- I'm sure with the tax breaks that Mark Cuban is going to get, he's really actually really not that mad. Um, finally, the celeb who's getting the biggest backlash is 50 Cent. 50 Cent uh, put out on his Instagram yesterday. He said, I don't care how the fight goes. I'm leaving with the winner. I still don't know what's going on. Congratulations. So the reason why 50 is getting so much backlash is he did say in a couple of interviews that he doesn't like to talk about politics. He did say that. But he said that Donald Trump offered him $3 million to perform at his one of his conventions and he turned it down. But if you are not going to talk about politics and you're going to turn down Donald Trump's money, don't put a picture of you on on your Instagram standing beside him shaking his hand. Oh, I forgot to say that for those who can't see it. Under that, under along with the post, he put a picture of him shaking Donald Trump's hand and kind of like putting his arm around him like their faces were close together. So I think that's where it's like, oh, all of a sudden now you're into politics and you're like, I'm leaving here with the winner. You know, um, I think that's why he's getting a lot of his backlash. I think he should have just more stayed out, uh, stayed out of it. But it looks like now where he's like, yeah, I was kind of really like backing him where it's like, really? How come you didn't want to perform with him before? How come you didn't want to come out and back him? But now you are. So you guys decide of everything I just said, the celeb, um, celeb reactions. Let me know what you thought about LeBron. Let me know what you think about 50 Cent. Let me know what you think overall about this whole election process. Canadians, I know I have a lot of UK viewers, Americans. Sound off. Do you think this, now that it's finally over, we could stop talking about it, stop talking about our differences and unite the country? Donald Trump is going to be the president. J.D. Vance is going to be the vice president. Um, they have won the Senate. I don't know about the House yet if it's been um, called, but it looks like, you know, if they do get the House, it looks like they have a blank check to do whatever they want, like how Barack Obama had um, when he first got elected in 2008, uh, 2008, where they had the House, the the Senate, and the presidency. What will Donald Trump do? Um, he did say yesterday already that first job, first day on the job, massive deportation. Um, what do you think is going to happen? How are you feeling? Um, let me know in the, in the uh, comment section below. All right, in our second lead story, Cassie's lawyer slams Diddy's gag order request, references previous statements from his family and attorney. Okay, before I read you this article, just want to give you some context. Yesterday, episode 369, I told you guys about Courtney Bergs, who uh, was the latest to come out and talk about Kim Porter's books, the hard drive, the tapes, celebrities, et cetera. And uh, Diddy's lawyer came out and said, hey, we want to put a gag order on the media. We want to put a gag order on everybody. We don't want anybody to be able to talk about Diddy. That's Diddy's lawyers, okay? Today now, Cassie's lawyer is coming and attacking Diddy and his lawyer and was like, oh, you want a gag order? Well, if you want a gag order, you shouldn't be talking in the media either, you and your family. So listen to what uh, he is saying. Sean Diddy Combs wants the courts to issue a gag order on his case, but Cassie's lawyer is filing a motion against it, okay? This is a major development. If whoever wins this section of the court is going to um, have a huge advantage, all right? So this is really big. 
According to reports, Cassie's lawyer has, is arguing that Diddy shouldn't be allowed to silence anybody making claims against him while his own family and attorney speak openly about the case. Cassie's lawyer repeatedly cited Diddy's son's Quincy's Instagram post in which he called the accusations that were made against his dad devastating to his family and promised that the truth shall prevail. Cassie's lawyer additionally cited statements made by Diddy's mom who called the case a public lynching and a narrative created of lies, as well as Diddy's own lawyer who alleged that the case is racially motivated. Cassie's lawyer went on further and said that Diddy's legal team is unfairly attempting to mismanage the statements and alleged victims while leaving his own supporters free to make public statements. Mr. Combs, his family, and his agent's statement alone undermines the legitimacy of the relief he is now requesting and is yet another bias for denying the request for a gag order. It has not been reported what the judge's decision has been made at this time. So like I said, this is a huge uh, break in the case. We will see what happens, but this gag order is going to be major. If the judge gets fed up and puts a gag order, that means nobody, civilly, criminally, anybody that has anything to do with the case, they will not allow to be saying anything unless, and if they do, they will be kicked out and they won't be able to be part of the proceeding. So um, I actually didn't think about this, to be fair. Um, you know, with Diddy saying, I, sorry, I meant to say, I didn't mean to think about it in this way, where Diddy's saying, hey, I want a gag order, but he is talking. So it, uh, Cassie's lawyer has a point. It's not fair. If you don't want them to be talking bad about you, you can't be talking bad about Cassie, and you can't be even talking good about yourself. A gag order means that you cannot speak. So if Diddy doesn't want to talk positive, about, if Diddy doesn't want people to talk bad about him, he shouldn't be allowed to talk good about him. Does that make sense to you guys? I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but it makes sense to me. Hey, don't talk bad about me. I won't talk good about me. That that should be fair. I don't think what Cassie's uh, lawyer is asking is unfair. And you know what? The cries from Diddy's mom and his kids and himself and his lawyers pretty much fall on deaf ears anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if I was uh, Diddy, I would... Um, except a, a complete gag order and just nobody talks about it. Um, and then you help uh, yourself in the public uh, eye. And then, of course, for potential jurors that might come on to the case. Let me know what you guys think about uh, this below. King Combs reveals he's taken over his father's Instagram account to go down memory lane of all the positive things he's done. We just talked about this <laughs> where it's like, hey, don't talk about me. Don't talk about me. But let me talk about me. Uh, here is Diddy's son, King Combs, giving us an announcement that he's taking over his father's Instagram. To me, this is a horrible decision, but I'll let you uh, judge for yourself. What's up, y'all? It's King Combs. Right now, I'm taking over my pop's Instagram. Horrible, horrible decision. All right. Um, sticking on Diddy, just to close out Donald Trump and Diddy. Everybody wants to know. Was Diddy eligible to vote? Did he vote? Um, and the answer is yes, he is eligible. And the answer to did he vote is we don't know. Uh, Diddy could still vote in the presidential election despite his legal issues. Despite being in jail for disturbing charges, Diddy was legally able to cast a vote in the 2024 election. Since he has not yet been convicted, he is allowed to vote as an absentee ballot from the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, where he is in custody. Of course, he would have had to request an absentee ballot ahead of time from the state where he has declared his residency, which is presumed to be California or Florida, as per TMZ. It's unclear if he's actually casted his own vote. What do you guys think? A lot of people are talking about this because it's like, Yo, if Trump is in office, well, sorry, not if, when Trump gets in office, if Diddy gets convicted, well, Diddy look to him to be like, yo, y'all know they're coming after me. Like they came after you, Donald. Yo, give me a pardon. People are saying that Donald Trump might give Diddy a pardon. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? You know, he has pardoned um, Kodak Black. He has pardoned a couple of other, you know, high profile people. I don't personally think he'll um, pardon him, but uh, we shall see. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you think Donald Trump will pardon Diddy.
All right, this brings us to question of the day. What other question of the day could we ask you other than how do you feel about the 2024 U.S. presidential election? Um, all right, Mrs. Duve said, never been so happy, Trump 24. The, uh, the Anthony underscore TG said, Latinos for Trump and put up a bunch of American flags. Uh, Duke and Anderson says, my bills still go on. I decided my fate, but I'm going to protect, protect women. I have daughters, mothers, sisters, and aunts. I feel for women. I really do. Having a man in a position to tell you what to do at your bodies is wild. So people are still feeling about the whole reproductive thing. Um, okay. Bass said, I feel happy, relieved that our country will be taken back to greatness. Uh, D underscore champ said, hope the Latinos that voted for him get exactly what they're asking for. Massive deportation. People who, okay, I'm not going to talk about those other things that he's talking about. Uh, he said, black men who voted for him, um, I'm not marching or go fund me when they, um, attack you. Okay. I don't want to talk about anything negative. Um, Lex said, um, heartbroken and heavy yet motivated and determined. Um, still black, still strong, still elite. Lisa Bell said, my 16-year-old girl woke up for school this morning, so hurt, so hurt. She and her friends were hopeful for a woman president, and um, that really didn't happen. Luna224 said, as a woman, I'm heartbroken. Somebody else said, they're sad and disappointed. Somebody said, I'm physically sick, not even a joke. Uh, yesterday was a scary day for me. Another person said, welcome to the 47th annual Hunger Games. Yeah, that was funny. Somebody said, I'm angry, sad, disappointed. Somebody said, goodbye, Department of Education and Public School Funding. The true winner is God. Okay. Um, I'm witnessing at the beginning of what will be the biggest mistake in our country's history. Somebody else said, I love it. I'm so happy um, because all these, okay, no, that's. A little bit of hatred. I just don't want to po promote any hatred. I don't mind seeing each side, but when it gets like dark, I'm not going to be repeating that. Um, somebody said, go Trump. Yes, we finally did it. We're Trump winners. Again, like it is normally on here. Somebody else said, yo, we're cooked. <laughs> we have Houston. We have a problem. Another person said, welcome to the 1960s. Disappointed, but not surprised. Like I assumed, split down the middle. Trump and Harris, sound off below. Let me know what you guys think about the election. Were you going for Trump? Were you going for Harris? More importantly, what I want to know is, what does this mean going forward? Are we going to unite? Are we going to um, unite? Or is the country going to stay divided and it's all just going to be a shambles? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Send me emails at trentoutloud at cfqr600.com. All right, this brings us to sports news. Ladies and gentlemen, we are 10 days away from Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. Uh, I wanted to remind you guys now that everybody is done with the election. The next battle up is Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. I've been talking about this all year. I remember it was supposed to happen in July, but then Mike Tyson got sick. It's back on. They're back promoting it. I'm super excited. Going to be on Netflix November the 15th. Um, I still want to go to it. Maybe see if QR 600 can hook me up with some tickets. Hook me up, y'all. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this fight. So I just want to remind you guys that the next big battle is on Jake Paul, Mike Tyson. Let me know in the comment section below or send me an email. Who you think is going to win? Whose side are, are you on? I am team Mike Tyson. I think that he's going to knock out Jake Paul because Mike Tyson is just fully crazy. Um, all right. That is my Thursday show. Thank you so much for kicking it with me. Make sure you tune in for Friday's show so we could wrap up the week and get you on to your weekend. Before I let you go, I just want to remind you of all the ways to keep up to date with the Trend Out Loud podcast. If you're used to watching the show on a YouTube or uh, podcast platforms, please try to check me out Monday through Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com um, uh, or AM if you're in the Montreal area. Uh, we do play the Trend Out Loud podcast, but we mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. It's a great hour. It's a great way to get your entertainment and viral news while listening to your favorite hits from the 90s and 2000s, and I select the music so you know it's going to be dope. Um, vice versa, if you're used to listening to the show on CFQR 600 and you can't always catch the show from 11 to 12, you're busy, I get it. Uh, we have three ways for you to keep up to date with the show. One, on a CFQR 600 website, once you click listen live, you can click to listen again 
the Trend Out Loud show will pop up and you can listen to all 370 episodes. You can binge watch us. Uh, of course, we are on uh, YouTube and also on all podcast platforms. Just go to your desired site, type in Trend Out Loud, the show will pop up. Don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new show and we do upload daily. You can follow me on any social platform. It's always the same handle, Trent Out Loud. Don't forget to follow the media company, Exo City Media, on Instagram. And lastly, for my CFQR 600 listeners, do not touch that dial. My homeboy, Don Smooth, is coming up next with the Midday Mix from 12 to 1. And Don is always dropping the hits. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. The U.S. election is over. Let's move on. Keep the peace. I'll see you all tomorrow, man. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Turn Out Loud. Peace.